so this is basically an oil and water separated general arrangement hmm. you have the bilge holding tank where you have, it is a usually a double bottom tank so all the bilge in your engine room is collected into this bilge holding tank and uh, there is a bilge pump also which has two modes of suction one is from your bilge holding tank right here this line and the other one is from the c chest for the c suction line so this is the primary stage or the first stage of your ws and this is the input output of your bilge room that is input for your uh, oil water separator this is the funnel shaped structure here oil first enter oil water enters here and through this it is going down and these are the baffle plates and through the baffle plates there is a drain which is going to the second stage so all this is being and the pressure inside is uh, roughly around two bar which is maintained by the bilge pump continuously and then this is the second stage where you, you have again two divisions so this is the common uh, area for for the divisions and you can see the center bulkhead like a structure which is dividing the two sections and these are the two coil sets coil sets are nothing but they are carbon fiber filters and this is a coarse one that is a lesser finer one and this is a finer filter and after this you can see that this uh, the drain is going through the odm this is the odm oil discharge monitor where you can see the ppm and you can set the controls for discharge and everything this is basically the control panel and then from there you you have a three way valve one which is going to the overboard and the other one which is going again back to the bilge holding tank and uh, this is a transducer for the level sensors that i was talking about that one in each tank and this is the separated oil tank or uh, oil uh, collection tank and oil collected in this is either discharge or sewer reception or it is burned in the incinerator as waste oil so this is the oil burned drain valve burned in incinerator are, yes sir this oil hmm. which is uh, separated into which is collected into the separated oil tank this can be burned in the incinerator or can be supplied to the sewer reception hmm. we have this air vent and uh, relief valve which is available and this control uh, switch and control uh, this uh, odm needs power supply so we have a dc power supply is from the engine room control room sir. so this air vent is basically kept open initially and then we start we will close this valve which is the bilge holding tank suction valve is closed and this c side suction valve is kept open and the bilge pump is started so this air vent should be kept open because the air which is present inside the uh, oil water separator needs to be pointed out and also uh, this is an indication because uh, there are there are no any visual indications as far as i know on this order please so uh, when this air vent is open and we are running bilge pump if the system is completely full then water starts coming out from the air vent then you can assume that the system is completely filled up so then you can close this air vent and the sea water is uh, circulated to to the overboard side so once you have filled the entire system with sea water then you can uh, uh, stop the pump close this c section valve open the suction side of the bilge holding tank and then again you start the bilge pump and start pumping uh, dirty or uh, oily water so this water may contain some solids uh, only oil or there could be emulsion this uh, So, uh, what you call generator drains for oil water separator drain or uh, pump room drain inside the engine room, wherever even in purified drain tanks, everything goes to this bilge holding tanks. Whatever drain trays, whichever whatever are there in the engine room, they basically also the bilge at the in the bottom platform of the ship. So that bilge is also drained into this bilge holding tanks. so basically whatever the impurities solid particles uh, whatever dust dirt everything it is dumped into this holding tank so when you are taking suction uh, include not only liquids but also some kind of solids might also be coming into this oil water separator 
but uh, we, uh, usually there is a filter before this to uh, take out the bigger size particles but nevertheless even small size solid impurities will get through into this uh, early water separator so this filter before this suction site should be kept always to be kept clean because if there are solid uh, too many solid particles entering into the early water separator this condensers will get frequently blocked so then you need to again frequently take them out or backflow them frequently also the uh, efficiency of the condensers will uh, get uh, will be reduced due to solid particles entering into the water base system so it is better to keep the water which is entering uh, sorry oily water which is entering into the water base as clean as possible from solid particles so that will greatly improve the life and efficiency of these condensers so after you uh, start pumping the oily water into this the lighter fractions which is the oil will start get accumulating at the top uh, in at this portion and the heavier particles that is a little bit of solids in water will start to first this will be filled with uh, dirty water dirty oily water uh, the uh, heavier fractions will start going down towards the baffle plates so this baffle plates uh, usually they work as the same as in the purifier so they are basically increasing the surface area for the water to travel thereby the oil which is there inside the water will get trapped at the bottom of this baffles or top of the baffles so the water that is almost devoid of oil because uh, maximum oil which is coming that is which is not in the emulsion phase so that will be collected or separated in the first stage so heavier oil droplets that are bigger size oil droplets those will be separated here and the medium size oil droplets they all will be uh, when they are passed through the baffle plates they tend to uh, hold on to this baffle plates the bigger size oil and uh, as they are growing in bigger in size they just uh, go on through these conical sections so you can see the tube like sections they flow through this and they are accumulated at the top of this uh, unit so when the oil level reaches the maximum level of this transducer so then this uh, where you can see this sensor this sensor senses this oil level and it is sent through the control switch to the control system so then using this uh, diaphragm which is pneumatic control that is through air this valve is opened and the oil which is there is collected into the separated oil tank so when so basically uh, the first question you have asked is why need why we need to fill sea water instead of directly putting this uh, oil water into the water base so there are two reasons for that first thing is that we need to flush the entire system with the sea water in order to uh, make it ready for the oily water to enter into it because if directly you are uh, pumping the bilge, uh, oily water which is present in the bilge holding tank into this uh, OWS system there is a chance that uh, these fine suction uh, tubes or this uh, baffle plates or this filters they might get choked with this uh, solid particles or the oil directly depositing on the outer side so that will uh, greatly reduce the efficiency of the condenser system and also frequent maintenance because of oil accumulation and sticking to the inside uh, this uh, oil will start sticking into the inside of this tanks and all so cleaning of that will be very difficult and also because of uh, this water uh, is not uh, used very frequently so it is only used when the bilge holding tank is full or we need to discharge uh, uh, water uh, less than 15 ppm of course we need to discharge it so when we are not using this and the oil gets uh, accumulated inside because this bilge holding tank also contains heavy fuel oil so this heavy fuel oil when it is not in a heated condition it tends to solidify and it gets stuck inside the entire system 
So whenever you are again uh, using the OWS system after a long time or after a certain period or when the conditions are very cold, so then you will have a problem with this oil getting solidified or becoming, uh, the viscosity will be very high. So when the viscosity is high, pumping through this system gets difficult and the efficiency of the system gets reduced. So this is one of the reasons for, for filling in the wet water. And the second reason is uh, oil and water are non-miscible. That is, they, are, they do not mix very easily. Until and unless you are keeping, you are uh, churning it or there is a high amount of pressure involved in that. So when you are basically filling this entire system with water, before you, you uh, allow this uh, uh, oily water from the bilge holding tank to pass through this, so you are uh, basically creating a medium through which oil can be separated easily. Because water being heavier fraction will always settle at the bottom of this chamber. So when you are allowing, when you are filling this entire system with seawater and then allowing this uh, bilge holding tank uh, oily water to enter into this, so already when there is water inside, first thing is just the oil will not get stuck onto the inside system inside uh, equipment or chambers or whatever the is there. And also the separation process becomes a bit easier compared to only oily water going entirely into the systems. So these are the basic and main two reasons. And if there are any others, as far as I know, so anyone who has any suggestions are welcome to add to this. And regard, uh, the second question which we have asked is regarding this conical flask. So basically, this is nothing but uh, simple uh, system server. When you are, this, as I said earlier, uh, this pump will generate around 1.5 to 2 bar of pressure. So when the water is entering here, from here, the oily water, so the lighter fraction is already, uh, you know, whenever it is before going inside, the lighter fraction is uh, separated and it is going to the top. So the heavier fraction which is going, to the bottom through this direction from here because the opening is more so the pressure uh, as we can as you know that wherever there is uh, more opening the pressure the flow tends to be more through in that direction so whatever the oily water which is still to be separated that is going through this section into the in this direction from here it will go down in this direction so then the uh, oily water is going through this pipeline structure, whatever is there. And then the oil is separated in these directions. The oil goes, the water is flowing in this direction. And the oil is again going in this direction. So which, whatever oil is there, it is being collected at the top of this funnel-like structure things, which you can see. So the oil will be collected here and it will be slowly going up through the funnels to the top of the structure where again as you can see that this uh, thing will be collected into the separate oil tanks. So the, the third thing is the uh, material of the baffle plate which uh, I think it is made up of uh, stainless steel but I'm not sure I'll just check it and then I'll let you know the third question the material of the baffle piece. And the water which is uh, passing through the buffer plates, then it is flowing to the second stage. And then the second stage, as I've already, already told you, there are two types of uh, coalsers available. One is the coarse coalser and one is the finer one. So when the, uh, this is, these are basically used for treating miscible liquids, that is, uh, which are nothing but emulsions. Emulsions are nothing but uh, two so, uh, liquids uh, which are amalgamated in each other. So that is nothing but in the, here the emulsion we get is of oil and water which are not separated. In the, this is nothing but a physical separation process basically. And here only the heavier uh, and the bigger sized oil molecules or particles can be separated. So the finer ones which are there in the oil which are mixed, intermixed in the water so those are separated in this coincer section. So coincer is nothing but, uh, it is basically made of carbon fiber. 
so whenever because the oil, uh, water is the majority uh, component in the entire system so oil particles which are lesser in nature when we are pumping through the coil set the oil particles tend to stick into the carbon fiber which is there inside this coil set. so when the, the oil is getting stuck inside so when the water is continuously passing through this the smaller fraction of oil is getting accumulated inside this uh, carbon fiber uh, system or carbon fiber filter so whenever the oil particle is big enough that is a smaller oil particles keep uh, coming and they keep on getting joined and they become a bigger bigger particles and then those bigger particles will flow out and they get accumulated at the top of this second uh, stage in the uh, here the oily particles which are going inside outer uh, uh, on the outside of this coil sir smaller solid particles and a little bit of oil is uh, uh, accumulated here so when the efficiency is reduced we need to stop the system take out this coil sir out and we need to clean this coil sir or through the back Uh, back flushing mechanism, if it is available, or otherwise, we need to physically remove this. Then there is a regeneration process for these coils, and they can be uh, used for many number of times. Regeneration is nothing but you can take out this coils or unit entirely. You can keep it in a hot tub, and that will uh, remove the oil which is accumulated from the outer side of the coils. And for the inner side, you can use the pressurized. Uh, Water to pressurized jet system to simply flush through the impurities, and the those will be come out. Those impurities will come out, and this regeneration will take approximately around two to three hours. And again, this uh, thing can be boxed back into the system, and the, again it can be used as usual. So here the accumulation is on the outer side, and the first stage out of this two. Here, the accumulation of the solid particles or oil basically is on the outer side, which is here. So the smaller particles, which are inside this and which grow in size, they uh, tend to come out and they usually float to the top of the chamber and they get accumulated here. So this basically uh, separates the maximum oily water emulsion from the first stage. and uh, whichever which is present the smaller fractions or whatever still left over oily particle substances are then pumped there uh, they pass here as uh, through this direction and they are pumped into water system. separate so from the first stage is filled on the outer side of the first stage of concept and from the outer side it is pumped into the concept but in the second stage whatever oil or oily water which is present here is pumped into the coil set and also the uh, filter here is more finer compared to the first stage so oil oily water enters here then the and the oily water which is coming here it contains practically very minute quantities of oil beta or very less Good. oil after The 15 ppm. Uh, Sapna so oil, oily oil substances are the most smallest of the oil, miscible oil substances which are present. They are accumulated on the inside of this coil, sir, on the inner side. Then almost uh, less than 15 ppm oily water is uh, filtered out through this coil, sir. Then that is uh, a sample when it is going out. First, a sample is going into this audium. So this audium is basically this again has a sampling unit inside. So which uh, there is, I think, optical uh, optical sample system. So this optical sample system basically uh, works on the principle of uh, optical uh, photometry. I don't exactly remember the name of it. But the basic system is there is a glass tube inside. on uh, one side there is a, a light uh, source which is uh, producing light and the other side we have a screen 
and this basically so when the sample water is going into the sampler the light is being focused onto the glass tube so when sufficient amount of light which is falling on this if it is falling on the screen so that means that the uh, uh, water or liquid which is present in the sampler tube is clear so the uh, in the instrumentation side there will be depending on, on the amount of light that is on, uh, falling on the screen so there is an internal system which depend you know, decides how much ppm is there if the water is dirty basically so less amount of light is uh, going onto the screen because the uh, maximum amount of light is either absorbed by the impurities or being reflected back so it is basically the amount of light which passes through the tube and onto the screen which decides the amount of uh, impurities in, in the sample which is being select uh, which is being collected in this uh, odm then basing on that your uh, ppm is determined and there is a scale and i don't exactly remember uh, how the measurements are made but basically when it is more than 15 ppm if if it is more than 15 ppm then the control unit sends a signal to this three way clock to close this wall and open the uh, side of the wall which is going back into the bilge building thing so until and unless this odm detects that the level of your water which is going through the system is less than 15 ppm the water keeps on getting circulated in the enter in the system and it will not be discharged over board and when this initially uh, this uh, system shows around 30 to 40 ppm so as this system is run for some time gradually this uh, ppm starts to slowly reduce so once this uh, uh, reading gets below 15 ppm then this wall is closed and the overboard discharge wall is open so your water can be discharged out into the sea so uh, basically according to theory this uh, system which is here it is set at basically according to the marple regulations it should be less than 15 ppm but usually taking into errors in the calibration and all usually this is set in between 8 to 10 ppm so when the total water content oily water content is less than uh, or in between 8 to 10 ppm or less than 10 ppm then this uh, valve is open through the water can be discharged overboard so this is basically the working of the oily water supply so this is the So basically, uh, cleaning of the coil sir is not uh, done in a time-bound manner. Uh, it basically is done depending on the efficiency. Uh, uh, sir has also asked the same question like, how do you know that the coil sir has to be as it blocked or there is a little change or clean something like that. So the basic uh, thing which we know out of this is the amount of flow rate which is coming out. So this uh, system will also the pressure. So whenever this coils are blocked or there is uh, no proper flow in the system, there is back pressure which is being built up in the bilge pump. Because if the coils are blocked, that is there two two coils here. In the first type of coils, the blockage will be on the outer side, and in the second type, the blockage is basically in the inner side. so when usually as I, as i already told earlier the total system works at around 1.5 to 2 bar pressure which you can find out in your discharge pressure of your bilge pump so if the coil sets are blocked and there is no proper flow of water through the coil sets into the either into the bilge building tank or to the over bottom then there is a back pressure which is Visible on your uh, bilge pump uh, discharge side, uh, discharge gauge, which is there on the discharge side of your bilge pump. So there you can find out the pressure. So if the pressure is rising above the normal uh, pressure which the system has to be working, then you need you can uh, 
understand that there is some problem with the filters. So then uh, you can open this filter, take it out, and then you can check and clean. And also, as you can see, there is a relief valve on top of the uh, this system. Basically, this relief valve is only in case of excess pressure because the uh, bridge pump is uh, usually a positive displacement pump. We are not using a centrifugal pump. So there is no uh, any limit for the pressure that it can generate. Only thing we need to check is continuously the discharge pressure is within the normal operating pressure of your OW, particular OW system, which is uh, on, the, on your ship. And this you can find out in your operating manual and what is the general working pressure of your OW. So any deviation from the general working pressure that you can find out at the discharge of the OW, and then you can suspect that this uh, thing has been as a problem or this something this uh, has been blocked or it is, it, has, it is time to clean this. And the other thing is that if there is any uh, blockage or there is flow or when the flow of water is less on the discharge head, this control system can detect the amount of flow. If the flow is less or it is not sufficient, then this control system can detect the amount of flow and also an audio uh, visible alarm or audio alarm is maybe uh, is being generated but i'm not sure about this because it's been a long time i forgot whether this works or not but this thing i'm pretty sure uh, pressure checking uh, the back pressure on your pump on the discharge cells so that is the first question and the second question if there was yes that usually get uh, locked, so we need to open up and take out these coils and we need to clean them. And uh, the other thing is there is sensors because as they are sensing the oil, sometimes oil might get accumulated on the sensor and it cannot uh, detect or sense accurately. So the sensors are removed and they are cleaned. And again, they are put back. And apart from this, uh, Cleaning is usually done prior to when you are uh, circulating the seawater. That basically uh, cleans the entire system for water, which are input water, oil, or any uh, oil or grease like substances which are present or flushed out when we are uh, using the seawater initially to completely fill the entire system. So that is the जब हम यूज करने के बाद जब हम फ्लशिंग करते हैं तो फ्लशिंग करते समय जो कुछ भी है थोड़ा तो इसमें रह जाएगा सर इसके अंदर ऑयल या थोड़ा एमल एमल के मिश्रण जो कुछ भी और ये जो इसका ओडीएम में जो एक ये फिल्टरिंग ये होता है मतलब सेंसिंग एक्यूपमेंट उसका एक ट्यूब होता है सर अगर वो ट्यूब में थोड़ा � तो इसका है वो ज्यादा दिखाएगा सर। जो जब तक वो लाइट ट्रेस वो स्क्रीन में पड़ेगा और वो भी जो इसका कैलिब्रेशन का हिसाब से इतना कैलिटी उसका वाइल वाटर में आनी चाहिए तब तक तो ये थोड़ा पीपीएम ज्यादा आपको दिखाएगा सर। तो जब भी है सफिशिएंट लाइट वो तो वो वाटर चुक के पास होके वो इसको खोल के ये ओवरबोर्ड का ये इसको बंद करके जो भी है बिल्ड होल्डिंग में जाना इसको बंद करके ये ओवरबोर्ड का ये थ्री वे वॉल में खुलेगा तब ये ओवरबोर्ड में जाएगा सर सो बेसिकली वो ऑप्शन दिए गए हैं कि तू जस्ट मेक शॉर दैट नो अमाउंट ऑफ ऑयल इस कोल्ड में क्योंकि जितना भी हम कोल्सर फिर भी थोड़ा तो ऑयल ये लाइन में जो रह जाएगा, उसको भी थोड़ा निकालने के लिए वो थोड़ा लैग जो पहले जो होता है, तो तीन चार बार तो फिर से ये सर्कुलेशन होगा, उसके बाद जैसे भी इसका 15 पीपीएम के अंदर आता है, तभी इसको खोल के ये ओवरबोर्ड में आता है, क्योंकि अगर थोड़ा भी ऑयल 
सेंसिटिव एरर्स में या ये एलेक्शन के वजह से अगर बाहर गया तो वो शिप और एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन का थोड़ा बहुत प्रॉब्लम हो सकता है क्योंकि ये भी इसका भी फेल होने के चांस होते हैं इसलिए हम जैसे मैंने अपने पहले बोला है अगर हम कैलिब्रेट कर, करते ही तब भी थोड़ा इसके इसमें प्रॉब्लम होने का ये होता है और इसीलिए हम 15 पीपीएम के कम ही रहते हैं सर अराउंड एट टू टेन पी पी हमारा शिप में तो इट वॉज अराउंड फाइव टू एट पी पी रखते थे सर इसका लेवल सो so, उससे भी कम होते हैं तभी ये ओवरबोर्ड बॉल खोल के इसको ओवरबोर्ड में डिस्चार्ज कर सकते थे तो उसके उससे ही कम ही रखते हैं क्योंकि जो कुछ भी अगर इसका कुछ प्रॉब्लम में भी है एफिशिएंसी का प्रॉब्लम है जो कुछ भी तो हमको तकलीफ ना पहुंचे कितना है क्या है वो तो चेंज होता रहेगा तो उसके हिसाब से भी टाइम लगता है तो एक तो टाइम डिले और ऑयल कंटेंट चेंज हो रहा है तो रीडिंग सेटल होने में टाइम तो लगेगा ही हम्म ठीक है और ये बफल प्लेट का मटेरियल में खोज के आपको बता दूं क्या बोलते हैं एक सेकंड बस कितना प्रेशर बताया था 2 1.5 टू 2 या 2 टू बार सर टू बार से ज्यादा हो रहा है ज्यादा आ रहा है इसका मतलब कोल सर ठीक से काम नहीं कर रहा है मतलब ठीक है आगे चलो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्या है एक क्वेश्चन तीन चार मिनट है एक क्वेश्चन बैक फ्लशिंग के बारे में पूछा है सर सर बैक फ्लशिंग बेसिकली ये था कि इसके जो डायरेक्शन वर्किंग डायरेक्शन है उसके ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन में हम क्लीनिंग मटेरियल या प्रेशर डाल के उसको निकालते हैं मतलब ऐसा कि ये अगर ये अगर मान लो ये कॉल सर इसका तो वर्किंग डायरेक्शन है पानी यहाँ से जाके अंदर जाएगा इसका hmm. तो इसका मतलब है जो भी एक्यूमुलेशन जो होता है वो बाहर का लाइनिंग में होता है इसका hmm. तो अगर इसको हमको क्लीन करना पड़ेगा तो हम यहाँ अंदर से अगर बाहर को पानी अंडर प्रेशर डालेंगे hmm. तो तब तो जो भी एक्यूमुलेशन जो होता है यहाँ का तो वो बाहर आ जाता है और हम ये इसको क्लीन कर सकते हैं और इसका तो उसका अपोजिट डायरेक्शन क्योंकि ये अंदर से बाहर आ रहे तो बाहर से हम अगर प्रेशर डालेंगे तो जो कुछ भी है ये अंदर इसको में एक्यूमलेट हो जाएगा तो क्योंकि बेसिकली इसको जो आप क्लीन करना है तो इसको निकालना पड़ेगा इसे इसके अंदर को ब्लैक बैक फ्लैशिंग हम नहीं कर सकते हैं एक तरीका होता है इसको बाहर से प्रेशर डाल के मतलब बाहर निकालने के बाद जो हम पाइप से हम क्लीन करते हैं प्रेशर पानी से हम क्लीन कर सकते हैं डायरेक्टली सरफेस में हम प्रेशर डाल के क्लीन कर सकते हैं और दूसरा बैकफ्लेशन का जरूरत ये और रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ ऑयल वाटर चेक्ड एवरी मंथ एंड एंटर्ड इन द ऑयल रिकॉर्ड बुक एंड ऑयल रिकॉर्ड यस दिस सैंपलर चेक 6 मंथ्स उस सैंपलर इज सर so oily water separator discharge regulations ships with 400 grt and above discharge of oily mixture from machinery space should be from oily water separator the ship should be en route the mixture is processed through oily water separator which should be approved as per annex 1 and after it should maximum effluent content should not exceed 15 ppm of your uh, this thing oily water so it's like very clear distilled water in your mineral water bottle 15 ppm is 15 parts per million is very nothing almost clean water <laughs> the oily mixture does not originate from cargo spaces and the oily water is not mixed with cargo residue so there is no 
distance or anything requirement and uh, the ship should not be in the special area that is antarctic area is the only special area for this one and any discharge into the sea or mixture from this vessel is prohibited okay stay alert we have to press the enter button first then one time about button then all open and increase the bpm by pressing the plus button Check. We have to open the air and the water valve. Overboard ball. There are two lock. 
house.
monitor showing 0 ppm and valve is open. There is no leakage from the system. And differential pressure is okay between stages. Sorry? Control valve key, pneumatic valves. Okay. And uh, so this is your sampler. And in this top, this uh, like bottle cap, we open this and there is a brush. We put this brush inside. And this brush, like the brush with which you clean your this thing, no bottle. So this brush we dip with some uh, oil. So for testing, we put this brush here. So this PPM will increase here 15 or whatever. And your overboard will close. Now you take out the brush out and this PPM will start going towards zero. So, so, so this is what we did a uh, few days before for testing this uh, that it is closing with the when the PPM is more the overboard is closing and when it is less it is uh, opening. So two methods are there either you put manually the reading or you have this uh, you are putting some brush or with oily water in the simulation mode.